Good news and bad news, depending who you are. The Prez is back. Six days in Vegas. A couple of days without first pitch. My apologies. We'll talk about that. And a big shout out to Marco D'Angelo for hosting the last two days. Uh, Dave Koken, let's start with you, my brother. How are you? I missed you. It's been a week. Uh, good. Uh, everything's rolling right now. It's been a, a good little run in baseball. And everything seems to be falling into place. So hopefully we'll keep it that way. I uh, Teddy, we got to see each other a couple of times. We both played in the seniors event in the WSOP. You were first out. Uh, Marco lasted the longest. What else is new? The man's a grinder and doesn't like to win tournaments, just likes to sit. Uh, how are you, my friend? Nice jacket. Yeah, we went on a little uh, shopping spree last week. What, what uh, you, thanks for your help in that. What, uh, tell Lawrence, tell the audience it. about it. Uh, you tell the audience about it. All I know is that I bought a bunch of clothes in a very relatively short amount of time which is about the only way I can handle shopping. I'm not uh, a good shopper. So, uh, But it was nice to see you, Lawrence, although uh, I think this much distance between us is probably better, uh, 2,000 miles or so. This way we don't, uh, we don't argue, and I don't, I don't have to smell your halitosis. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, I didn't know you got close enough to my face to smell my halitosis. That didn't sound right. Uh, so, Dave, uh, what Teddy's talking about is he called me up a couple of weeks ago, and he said he wanted a new wardrobe, start to finish. Uh, I'm like, okay, let's go. So the two of us head to the premium outlet mall, uh, in Vegas. I think we were there for about three hours. Oh, that's a long shopping trip. Oh boy. Dave, he bought four blazers, three pairs of pants, three pairs, five pairs of pants, three pairs of shoes, nine shirts. Uh, it was an incredibly successful and actually fun time. I, I enjoyed it. And uh, I see and, you. And the, the, Go on. Well, the best part about it is that it's over. Yeah. <laughs> so, know, yeah, I got a bunch of new clothes. I did it real fast, and I, I don't think I'm returning anything. So, so we had uh, a we're few, up tags one at a time. So we had a few comments while I was away, and Marco hosted the show. Um, you know, some, some, some of the listeners uh, like Marco better than me uh, and would prefer he host the show. So... Couple of quick. I never see, where, where are the comments? I never see them. Oh well, they're they're they're, they're on YouTube, but also we got a big listenership on iTunes where they comment as well. I've never read any of the iTunes comments, uh, but our esteemed leader Johnny D uh, reads them and tells me. So I get an email this morning from Johnny saying, uh, "Hey Prez, uh, some of the guys like Marco better than you hosting, so we're going to." Um, Marco's going to share hosting with you. He'll do a couple of days. You'll do a couple of days. So I called Johnny and said. Oh, wow. What are they saying about me? Because I have not. Honestly, I want to know. Because, oh, no, uh, Dave, the comments about you are phenomenal. They're really. Okay, I, I mean, to, hopefully I'm providing some good information. Yeah, no, there's never been a negative comment about you. And you should check out YouTube. But the bottom line for me, honestly, guys uh, and listeners out there is. You know, I started the show. I came up with the idea. I work really hard on it. I do the same with Morning Joe, which will have a name change coming this football season. Thank I do the, the Lord. same. I do the same with Puck Time. I came up, and these shows are important to me. And uh, you know, I've asked Marco a hundred times to co-host these shows with me. Uh, so yeah, my shows, uh, and I'm not ready to give it up. So. Uh, sorry, Marco, we're not sharing, but uh, you're more than welcome to do your own show if you have any ideas, and I'm happy to come on as a guest. Uh, and to the listeners who want more Marco, I'll bring you more Marco. I'll have Marco come on three times a week if he wants to. I love Marco, and I think he's outstanding at it. Uh, but you've got me, and uh, I am. I'm going. the shows are going to go through a huge change over the next month, so bear with us. Uh, guys, should we talk baseball? Yeah, uh, a couple of quick notes. Early into the night, he's now getting hammered already. Well, he's not throwing his fastball enough. He's relying too much on on trying to finesse hitters, unlike last year. And I think that's something to keep in mind because Snell is frequently overpriced based on the fact that he won the Cy Young last year. Teddy, he's not anywhere close to where he was last season at this point. No, and the markets haven't really caught up with that yet. He took right. a ton of money today. 
Yeah, well, not a ton of money, but a fair bit of money today. Uh, well, I think it's not even anti CC money, though. When you consider that the line went up 15 cents at Yankee Stadium, where the Yankees have been killing the Rays, that's a big market move on Snell. And, and right now they're getting a lunch handed to them. So, again, that, these are little notes you keep track of it as to why pitchers are struggling when they probably shouldn't be struggling, determining if it's just a fluke or whether they're doing something wrong. Uh, but it's something that can make you money moving forward. And I'm going to be keeping an eye out to maybe go against Snell in his next couple of starts until he starts to show like uh, that, he, that he's back to being Blake Snell. Great point, Dave. Um, okay, boys, let's get right to it. Uh, first game on tap, 640 Eastern time, Kansas City against Seattle. Uh, Kansas- wait, wait, wait. You're still not going in rotation order like months later? Yeah, Teddy, you I'm not. And, yet? and you're oh, not, not allowed to talk about it. I'm, Teddy, enough. Thank you. Nice fixing of the jacket. By the way, listeners, that's one of the new jackets that Teddy purchased, uh, as well as shirt, the nice, beautiful, what, what, what would you call that color? Like a taupe. Oh, What's man. taupe? This is, uh, the only thing I care about is the games in rotation order so I can find them and our viewers can find them. Okay, that's well, next time you're on, you have my word, I will go through rotation order. All right. But now you're just going to go randomly? Yeah, randomly. Well, I, think, I think what he's doing is going by time. Correct. Because the first of the night games would be the Kansas City-Seattle game. Correct. Which, okay. But but okay. I will I will be going by a rotation order shortly. We're, I'm changing the whole show around. Guys, we're seven minutes in. Let's get to it. Well, let's go. Kansas City. <laughs> well, we're not, listen, we're not going to waste much time on this game. I can tell you that. Okay, good. Kansas City, three wins in a row. Uh, playing Seattle, two disaster teams. You got the away team at plus 106. The over and under here is nine. Uh, Dave, we'll go to you first. Uh, what do you like in this game? Nothing. Because my numbers say Seattle, and there isn't a chance in the world I'd lay a price with Seattle right now. And really, it's as simple as that. I mean, last night I saw some guys in the Mariners, and I'm shaking my head going, why are you doing this? I, I, I understand the metrics. I understand the models. But if the model comes up Seattle, you just skip it and move to the next game. They have tossed in the towel on the season already. I know they, they're 6-7 and seven in their last 13, so a little better lately. But they're, they're god-awful. They're trading away everybody. D. Gordon's going to be gone by next week probably. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, yeah, he can pitch a little bit. So can Brad Keller. To me, there's just this is just a game I completely scratched as soon as I did my uh, number on the game, and I said, "Oh, okay, it's coming up Seattle next." Uh, Teddy, yeah, one I like- thing that I don't want is teams that are on a downward spiral at home, and I'm laying a price with them. You know, the Mariners are what two and ten their last dozen home games, and you're laying a price with them here. Uh, that to me is a priori. I want no part of uh, Seattle. It'd be Casey or pass. And frankly, the uh, Royals in this price range, eh, yeah, yeah. you guys can have them. <laughs> yeah. But and not only that, Teddy, I mean, Brad Keller has pitched well his last three outings. He's Owen two in that time span, but his ERA is rock solid. And so is his whip. Uh, Gonzalez just can't get it going from start to finish. I actually like the over in this game. And you know, Seattle on the over is 51 and 23. Kansas City four games above 500 yeah. on the over as well and I think nine's a short number, Dave. Yeah, I, I can I can buy that. Um particularly when you factor in the Seattle bullpen which is awful yeah. and the fact that Seattle's defense is by far the worst in baseball which means you're you're you know there's a decent chance you'll get a, an unearned run or two at some point in the game and those definitely help overs. Yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm going today. Teddy, we'll go to you first on the Detroit-Pittsburgh game. Um, we've got D- Detroit at plus anywhere between 158 and 170. Uh, Pittsburgh's at home tonight. Uh, I don't... Uh, listen, I, I, I don't know how you can play Pittsburgh here. This team has lost 8 of 10. Uh, they're in a free fall. Uh, Zimmerman is pitching badly to say the least and William's oh, much better but I mean to me this is an outright pass Teddy well I, I mean there's been an enormous line move in this ball game all the money going towards Williams and the Pirates um I don't necessarily disagree with that where the uh, Tigers what four and 11 in June uh they're not good of course Pittsburgh's two and nine their last 11 <laughs> not like they're playing good ball but 
Trevor Williams, who's been on the DL since the middle of May, uh, prior to his stint on the DL, he'd been really good. You know, he lasted at least six innings in each of his first eight starts. He had a strong second half last year. The Pirates went six and three uh, in his uh, nine starts in 2019. Though he does have one quote that really concerned me about supporting him here. And we've seen all this money for Pittsburgh. Quote from Williams. It's my first time on the DL and hopefully my last. It's exciting to get back in there. I'm going to help the team as much as I can. Which means he's not used to coming off the DL and making that first start and going through the process. He made a rehab start at AAA Indy, tour and runs, four hits in three innings. I've got my concerns about laying that price with Williams here. I can't lay that price with Williams yeah. here. So it would be Tigers or pass, and I don't want the Tigers. So it's a clear pass. Dave, pass for Teddy and I. What do you like in this game? Well, I'm also uncertain as to Jordan Zimmerman's status because he's also been hurt. Now, this was supposed to be Matthew Boyd's start. They bumped him down back a day until they trade him, which it looks like Boyd's probably going to end up someplace else. The, the Pirates are they're a really bad baseball team right now, and they, they look like a rudderless ship. Um, I was talking about this yesterday in the radio show, I believe it was. they got to get rid of Ray Searage. Okay, I mean, at what point do you look at a pitching staff and say, we got a problem with the pitching coach? All these guys that leave Pittsburgh are getting better when they leave. Garrett Cole's gotten much better since he left. Uh, Glasnow. Glasnow has gotten better since he left. There's a couple of other names that, that I'm blanking on. Chris Archer's gotten worse since he arrived in, in Pittsburgh. None of their young pitchers are developing. I mean, I, I can't blame Searich for the tie-on injuries, uh, but uh, uh, Archer I mentioned, and uh, uh, there's a couple of other guys on the, the Pirates staff, and, and, and Keller has looked awful, and he's supposed to be their, their top pitching prospect. So, you know, th this is the problem with the Pirates. They never make changes where they count, which is in the dugout. <laughs> Uh, they're just a bad team. I wouldn't consider laying 190 with them. I would actually lean to the Tigers here uh, with Zimmerman. Probably more used to this type of scenario, having not pitched in a while and coming off the, uh, the injured list to pitch. He's Dave Koch, and I'm the Prez. Teddy covers with us. You're watching First Pitch. You can get us every day at our Wager Talk TV channel on YouTube. Um, excited to be back, guys. Uh, Teddy. Teddy. Yeah? How are you? Dude, we have 15 games to get through and 18 minutes to do it. Let's go. I know. I'm starting with you, brother. Philadelphia against Washington. Washington on a nice little run. Um, only five games below 500 right now. They're at home. This is, this is the second game of a doubleheader. Yep, it is. So, so neither of you guys want to talk about it? Well, I don't even we're know who's going to be pass. playing. So... There you go, people. I have been ixnayed. Uh, Los oh, Angeles okay. against... No, I need to get a red card for you. Oh, oh I, wanted to, I wanted to You would have at least two today. I wanted to mention the red card. Okay, let me make one time. quick point, by the way. And another reason I would, I would, I would avoid this, this game. Arietta has been terrible. And Scherzer is going to be pitching with some kind of a mask on because yeah, he broke his yeah. nose trying to bunt yesterday. You got to see how he's going to perform. So I, I would stay way out of that game. Teddy, thanks for reminding me about the red card. I actually took it to Vegas and used it at the poker table a few times. So it's packed in my bag. I don't have the red card with me today. Um, but it was fun having it there at the poker table. Uh, let's get on to the next game. The Angels versus Toronto. Man, the Blue Jays are just a disaster uh, team right now. Uh, we have uh, Toronto at home. Uh, they're a plus 140-ish dog. Uh, the Angels have done well. They, they've won uh, their last two games against Toronto. Uh, they've won six of eight. And Toronto, uh, they, just, they just can't win at all. Uh, he... Heaney versus Sanchez, and Sanchez has just been a nightmare of late. Uh, Dave, what do you like in this game? Well, I mean, I think the Angels were certainly playable at the opening line, which was 140. Now it's 170. 70, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't trust Andrew Heaney as this big a favorite because he's still a guy who has, he has a tendency to have one bad inning in every game, and that's, that's sometimes all you need. Aaron Sanchez has been dismal. For the Blue Jays, and I said this, I don't know, maybe 180 times, so I'll say it 181 times. Aaron Sanchez is a relief pitcher, and he could be a really good relief pitcher because he's got two 
solid uh, offerings. And that, to me, is all a relief pitcher me- needs. He does not have the arsenal to be a starting pitcher. His control is no good. And I don't know why the Blue Jays haven't made him into a, a relief pitcher, because I think they can market him higher there. They're not going to get anything for him if they offer him out there, because he's, he's a flop as a starting pitcher. Anyway, as far as this game goes, uh, it'd be no play for me. The Angels are really hot right now. They're feeling great about themselves. Be, uh, uh, Justin Upton is back yeah. from his injury. They're going to get Simmons back in a couple of days. If their pitching holds up, they can make a playoff run. They're not far out of the, the wild card right now. No, and they're also 500 on the season. And, Dave, they're talking in Toronto, at least on the radio, about uh, exactly the same thing as you. they got to make Sanchez a relief pitcher. Uh, well, Teddy, you talked to me two years ago. I could have told him that. Well, Dave, nobody is as brilliant as you. Teddy, what do you like in this game? Okay, hey, Bubba. Toronto has lost the first two games of this series at home. They got swept their last series at home. This is a team, you know, I really look for teams that have no home field advantage and try to bet against them at home. And the Blue Jays right now have no home field advantage. And uh, as Dave talked about, this is an Angels team. A, has upside. B, has momentum. C, has a bunch of guys coming off the DL that are playing good. Uh, It's a one-way game for me. Angels are past. New York Mets, Dave, playing Atlanta. Atlanta's on a nice run right now. Uh, And, you know, it's funny. I've been telling everybody all season, take the overs blind in the Atlanta game. Uh, They were hovering at 500 for a little while. Uh, Now they are 43 to the over, 28 to the under. Uh, You know, some of the comments... Uh, when Marco was hosting the show was Prez doesn't give out a lot of information. Yeah, I've been telling you all year to bet the over on Atlanta blind. They are 15 games over to the over. So for you people out there who think the Prez doesn't give out info, that's literally guaranteed money. Tonight, Atlanta... Minus 150-ish. The over and under is 10 here. Yeah. Um, I don't want no to be... bargains. Listen, I don't want to be betting over 10s in National League, but, you know, I, I, I've said it all along. I'm literally bled, betting Atlanta over blind, so uh, that will continue tonight. Uh, Mats versus Freed. Dave, what do you like in this game? You're not the only one bet the over because this opened nine and a half with the unders <laughs> that he used. And now we're seeing 10, and I'm seeing the over actually juiced at, uh, at Superbook USA, uh, which means that others will start to follow uh, because that's that's one of the sharper houses, and uh, uh, they're usually a, a barometer of where the number's going to go. So it, I, look, here, here's the thing, though. Um, Atlanta had been absolutely killing the baseball, crushing yeah. it, until last night when they ran into Jacob deGrom, who was throwing about 100, and I think had a career high at strikeouts last night. And it only takes one game sometimes to spiral the team the other way with their offense, especially since there has to be some cooling off with the Braves' offense. Steven Matz is a lefty, so maybe that doesn't impact them as much as if they were facing another right-hander. Max Fried has not been good lately uh, for the Braves. Uh, he, he's just fallen off some. I think it's probably a temporary thing, but you know, young pitchers will go through this. It looks to me like a game that's priced about right, maybe a shade high on the Braves' side, uh, but not enough for me to really pull the trigger on the Mets. I have, I lean that way. Uh, Teddy, Atlanta, eight wins in their last 10 games. This team is absolutely on fire. Um, first place in the NL East. I agree with Dave. You know, you're hitting the ball every day really well, 15, 20 games in a row, and then you have a real soft outing and you do spiral downwards for a bit. And there are always corrections. Uh, The problem here is the New York Mets are playing to the over too. So, uh, you know, I'm going to stay on the over in this game. What do you like? I know. You, you guaranteed our listening audience that a team that's already 15 games to the over this year is guaranteed money going to the over. No, where do you think that, no, that's, that's what not what I, Teddy, stop. I'm not listening to your shit today at all. I am, Dave can attest to the fact that I have been saying bet the over in Atlanta since the first game. I understand that. And that's, that's good. It is brilliant tactical advice, Prez. They've just gone over 10 in a row. What's the advice moving forward for Atlanta? It's not about what's in the rearview mirror. 
Dude, moving forward, well, my you're attitude is simple. Tonight. You're I'm, not going to tell me this flying over the total every day. They're not going to do it anymore. Of course, Teddy, of course they're going to have games going under. Of course. But I'm not. I'm talking about as a, oh, overall. Yes. From this moment on, from today is June 19th. The end of the season. Check every play the Braves have from here to there. Are they going to have 15? Are they going to be 15 games to the over the, the back half of the campaign? Yes. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll test that later. Worth noting, the Mets had one of those closed-door player-only meetings following their ugly loss on Monday. Yep. Pete Alonzo, who responded with four hits yesterday, including a dinger, quote, it was all just honesty. We were just being honest with ourselves. We are not going to fold. We have a lot of ball left. They responded very well, obviously, to the closed-door players-only meeting last night. And Mets is one guy with a very good track record against the current Braves, and Atlanta in general. Uh, so what do you like tonight? What do you like tonight? The over. Okay. Blindly. Not, I, would, I, would take Mets or, I would take Mets or pass. Okay. Chicago White Sox against the Cubbies tonight. Uh, the White Sox surprising, Dave. One game below 500, and this is a team that's setting up real well for the future. Uh, home team is minus 150-ish. The over and under here is seven. Uh, the White Sox won last night three to one. Uh, where are you going in this game, my friend? Well, I'm not going against Lucas Giolito. The market is. Uh, they can have the Cubs. I, I, look, Giolito's pitching the best ball in the entire major leagues right now. There's nobody yeah. pitching better than Giolito. And I, I, I can, I, this is sharp money on the Cubs from what I can gather. But it doesn't mean uh, I don't necessarily follow sharp money. In fact, I really don't care where it is. I do my own stuff. Um, I'm not going to get I'm Lane 140 or 145 against Giolito at this point, not a chance. So White Sox are nothing. I haven't finalized my card yet, but I'm, I'm looking at that game. Yeah, Dave, I mean, you, you say White Sox are nothing, but I mean, to me, why isn't it just White Sox? We have a pitcher who is 10 and 1 on the season. In his last three games, he is a .43 ERA and a .86 whip. Uh, Chicago, you know, I mean, this team is playing well. They've won four of six. You know, why, why not just the White Sox? Well, I might very well end up there. I mean, it's getting more tempting by the minute. I'm seeing 150 at one of the square houses. Yeah. There, there, there are 20 cent lines. That doesn't matter. Uh, but 142. Yeah, I mean, plus one better than 130. I think I'm probably going to make it better than the White Sox. Teddy? And for as good as Giolito's been, Lester hasn't been good. No. You know, look at his last six starts. He's got an ERA like approaching eight. He got bombed by the – well, I shouldn't say he got bombed by the Dodgers last time. He gave up three home runs in that game. And his quote afterwards is why the wise guys are betting Chicago today. Here's uh, Lester's quote. I felt like I had great stuff. I got beat by three opposite field home runs. I would like to think that pitching to the big part of the field is still beneficial, but I guess it's not. Uh, Lester, <laughs> not in good – not in a particularly good no, mood. It, well, you know, and I think that actually the subtle – Reference there, uh, and it's something we've talked about. And now the numbers are in, by the way. I'll make this real quick because I know we're pressed on time. But they did some number comparisons on exit velocity producing home runs. Same exit velocity last year as opposed to this year. 14% more home runs. The ball is juiced, and I think that's what Lester was referring to with opposite field home runs where he felt he made good pitches, Force guys go the other way, and the ball went out of the park anyway. That sounds like a frustrated pitcher, and I think he's not the only one. Yeah, I mean, it definitely could be juiced, especially in the Minnesota games. Uh, but, you know, we've been down this ball juice thing so many times. No, no, not like this. Not like this. We're, we're, we're going to get shattered. Not just broken records this year, shattered records this year. The Twins are on pace to hit over 300 homers. This is crazy. That's Almost to a game. Yeah. <laughs> and the all-time record is what the Yankees set last year. Yeah. But that's what the fans want, evidently. I think baseball's de determined. I don't know. What do I know? 
Baseball's Dave, determined that fans love home runs, so that's what you're going to get. Dave, we've been doing this show together for a while now, and you have been uh, pretty anti-Cleveland. Yet here they are, second in the in the Central, uh, four games above 500, uh, oh. playing to the under. Wow, 29 and 41 to the under. Uh, they're playing Texas tonight, and Cleveland is rolling right now. Uh, they yeah. won four of five. Uh, this team is hitting the ball as well as pitching well. Uh, tonight, they're basically a pick 'em. Uh, plus 100. Why should we not ride Cleveland? Well, I'll give you one reason. It's Adam Plutko, who uh, he just isn't very good, okay? I, he, he's a fly ball pitcher. And in fact, you can make a case he's an extreme fly ball pitcher. Those are guys I'm not crazy about having, especially in ballparks where the ball can go a long way uh, when it's hit in the air. The, 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 the other side, unfortunately, is the rookie Joe Palumbo, who was very good once through the order in his first start and then uh, got knocked out in the fourth inning. I have a tendency to think you might get some runs in this one. Uh, totals are high, as it always is in Texas. And the Rangers are a little bit shorthanded still with some injury issues. So I'm probably going to stay out of the game. But I, I would not – I think Adam Plutko is kind of fool's gold. I think this is the weak link in their rotation at this point, And he's only in the rotation because of the injury situation. And he's a guy Texas might be able to exploit. So – um, uh, maybe a light lean to the Rangers here. Uh, probably not playable. Yeah. Look, I mean, the Rangers pitcher is a disaster as well. Uh, we have an over and under in this game of 10 and a half. Yeah. I'd like to bet the over here, but I can't. It's too high. Teddy, what do you think? Why is it too high? It's too high for me. For, for a game in Arlington, this is what the totals are. If you want to bet overs in Texas in the summer with two bad pitchers, you're looking at 10 and a half 11s. And those games can and will and do go over the total. Uh, I certainly wouldn't talk out of that wager. But you asked why not just play Cleveland. Rangers off a loss at home have been, bro, they're 25 and 13 at home this year. They've been dominant on this field. Uh, I like the character of this Texas team a lot more than I like the character of the Indians team. And to me, that matters in this price range. Uh, he's Teddy Covers. I'm the Prez. Dave Koken with us. You're listening to First Pitch. Uh, and we're going to talk about Boston against Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, 48 and 24 on the season. Outstanding. Just phenomenal. Up 21 units of money if you've bet them blind on the money line. The Red Sox, 40 and 35. Uh, Minnesota is minus 125. The over and under is nine and a half. It's Rodriguez versus Gibson tonight. Um, Dave, I'll go to you first. Uh, to me, you know, I feel like Boston, obviously Boston is playing really good ball. They've won six of their last seven. Uh, they did just lose yesterday 4-3 to Minnesota. But I think Minnesota is a better team here, and I'm getting a short price. I like them. I can't disagree with it. Um, I mean, that's, those are 17 inning games are tough to lose. I know the Red Sox lost an 18 game, 18 inning game in the World Series, and then and then got rid of the Dodgers. But still, in the regular season, it's a little bit different. And uh, that was a downer for the Red Sox last night. They they blew the lead twice, once in the uh, ninth, and then once in extra innings. Those are tough to bounce back from. And this Minnesota team, I think, has a little more swagger uh, right now than the Red Sox. But I, I actually. This is a game where I would wait to see what the lineup looks like because you might have some regular sitting after 17 innings last night. So I would hold off on any serious judgment on this game until we know who's playing. Uh, Teddy, I mean, you know, you're going to have the bullpens a mess tonight. We have an over and under of nine and a half. Uh, normally, I'd like to take the overs in these spots. So I used to knee jerk to the overs in these spots all the time. I would need you to the overs after a doubleheader. I would need you to the overs after an extra inning game. Say, oh, the bullpens are worn down. And then I started tracking results properly and realized I was losing those bets because it's a knee-jerk reaction. The lineups are tired, too. <laughs> you know, these guys played a 17-inning marathon last night, so everybody's tired. Now, both starters, we talk about the bullpens being used up. Both starters know they need to last deep in this ballgame. Gibson... Needed only 88 pitches to get through eight scoreless against KC last time. But Rodriguez, he was stretched out. Season-high 114-pitch effort 
in his last outing. That, to my mind, is a big concern for the Red Sox tonight. Minnesota, the clear choice for this better. All of us agree. Uh, Dave, Miami, back to their old uh, ways. They've uh, won three of their last seven games, out of their last ten games. They're playing St. Louis, who's two games above 500. Um, St. Louis, a massive minus one, <laughs> a massive minus uh, 180 to 200 favorite. The over and under in this game is eight and a half. Uh, what do you like? Well, uh, Trevor Richards was kind of fool's gold for a little bit. Uh, his changeup is really good. I mean, he's got a terrific change, but he doesn't have a lot else. His fastball is really pedestrian. And uh, this little hot stretch that he had, I think, was kind of fluky. Um, Ponce de Leon, he's not a guy I'd run to the window with to lay 180, to be honest with you. Uh, but the Cardinals should win this baseball game. I think it's priced about right. Um, I, I didn't see any particular value here. Uh, with Miami, with Richards. I will say this, you know, they, they get a, they're they getting a nice lift from some of these kids they brought up, Yamamoto, two straight. He's the Cardinal killer right now. He's had two major league starts, both against the Cardinals, in both seven-inning shutouts. So that's, you know, it's a little momentum boost for Miami. I, I, I guess if I had to make a play in the game, I would take the price, but uh, I'm just not enamored enough with Richards to actually do so. Uh, Teddy, any thoughts on this game? I lean under eight and a half in this one. Two lineups that aren't in great current form. Look, Miami can't hit. They're not going to hit. and They've had their occasional hot streak. St. Louis at times has shown signs, but I don't see either of these lineups going nuts tonight. Uh, and this is a game where the two starters aren't regarded as elite. So we've got a decent total, eight and a half to work with. I like the under. Uh, speaking of lineups going nuts, uh, Colorado uh, 8, 13, 14, 12, 9, 1, 10, 6. Uh, this team is hitting the ball all over the place, and the over and under in this game is 8.5. Uh, they're playing Arizona. A ton of tickets are being written on Arizona right now, minus uh, somewhere around 160. Uh, Dave, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the eye. Uh, I'm just going to take the over in this one. Give to us in the mouth, I believe, is the yeah, 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 yeah. I don't look anything in the mouth. Good move. Uh, yeah, that saves the halitosis problem. <laughs> Zach Grinke on the mound for Arizona. That's why people are betting the Diamondbacks in the game, and uh, it's kind of tough to argue against that. I mean, he's just having a great season. Uh, Jonathan Gray for the Rockies remains Jonathan Gray. I, if you watch him, just forget about. Uh, his name, his record, and all that stuff. You just watch it, watch him pitch. It's like, geez, this guy's got phenomenal stuff. He really does. And therefore, he is one of the most enigmatic pitchers in baseball to me because John Gray should be a big winner for the Rockies, and he's not because he's a guy who, I, I, to Teddy, it's got to be mental. His stuff is too good for him to have these pedestrian-looking numbers. Um, it, it makes it difficult for me whenever he's involved because I know what Gray is capable of. In looking at that, what he's capable of and seeing plus 140 available with probably a little better baseball team overall, it's really tempting. But I know that Gray is not reliable, and Grinky is. And at some point in this game, the Diamondbacks will probably find a way to get a couple of men on base and Gray out of his meltdown and give up a home run, and the Diamondbacks will find a way to win the game. I'm not going to lay 150. I'm just not going to do that. But uh, I just don't trust the Rockies in Gray here. Yeah, and Arizona, they, I mean, again, I, I look for teams that don't win at home and try to take advantage of that. And Arizona has a losing record at home this season. The home field edge hasn't been there. Tori Lovello was talking about it, how they're, you know, and now some of it's mental there. So I understand. They want Granke, and Granke's got a real good track record against the uh, Rockies short-term and long-term. Um, I can understand it, but not with my money and not with a uh, – you say these two teams are even – relatively even they, they, they probably are but if they're relatively even and we're getting a nice plus price with the one side that tends to be the way we like to look yep last game on the board boys uh san francisco winners of five of their last seven uh playing the dodgers tonight 
Uh, the Dodgers, absolutely massive favorites. Uh, anywhere from minus 160, there's a minus 190 on the board. Oh, nah, I don't know what you're looking at. The, the 260, 250. Yeah, Dodgers, what? not the Angels. Yeah, the Dodgers. Okay, guys, I, I'm looking at 2 2 bet. It's minus 290. Not that I've ever heard of them. Uh, anyway. No, you said, one, you said 190. Oh, I meant to. Uh, okay. Anyway, guys, let's get this over with because I'm a little bit out of it today. Flew in late, late last night. Uh, I never used to get jet lagged over three hours, but now as I age, I am. Dave, take us home. Uh, I made the line 235 and it's 250 or 260. So next. Teddy. Pomerantz has actually pitched better his last couple of starts. Uh, and... There's 16 and a half games worth of difference between these two teams in the standings. Just a six and five record for the Dodgers against the Giants this year. You've been betting the Giants every game. You've been making money. He's Teddy. I'm the Prez. Dave Koken with us. We'll see you guys all tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Thanks for watching. I'll be a little bit more awake and alert tomorrow and ready to go. Uh, gents, thanks for doing this. I missed you both. And I'll, uh, Dave, I'll see you tomorrow and Teddy next week. Sounds good. Cheerio.